preview of it. David, thanks for joining us. How do you do it? Tell us a little bit about what you do for the uh, the Daily Press up there in uh, Hampton Roads, Virginia, and hope you guys are staying warm up there. We're actually doing a lot better than y'all. I mean, we got a little dusting uh, on Wednesday, then the rain washed it away. Uh, it's been a very uh, uneventful 48 hours, unlike the uh, good folks south of us and, and also those to the north. Uh, I'm a I'm a longtime columnist here. I covered state for the ACC, and uh, that's pretty much it. David, thanks again for joining us. Like I said, this is a big game for the Clemson Tigers in basketball. They're right on the bubble of the ACC tournament. So what can you tell us about Virginia's basketball team? Uh, really, is this a surprising year? Because I know they're doing really well in the ACC. Well, they, they, were, they were picked fourth in, 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 in preseason. Uh, I, I picked them third uh, ahead of North Carolina. I think we, we all figured that this would be an NCAA tournament team. 11 and 1 in the ACC? I don't think so. Uh, but, but this is a squad that since the first of the year, now on December 30th, they went down to Tennessee and lost by 35. And you talk about a wake up call. Uh, they have been excellent since. They are the mirror image of Clemson guys defensively. They just grind you. Uh, in, in the half court, and they're just so effective. That's why it's hard to envision either team in the 60s tomorrow. And talk about the job uh, Tony Bennett's done. I was listening to a little bit of his interview on Pac-Man the other day. Uh, he's done quite a remarkable job. Got him sitting at 11-1 and one in the ACC. Um, and it should be an interesting game tomorrow, and, and obviously a huge matchup with Syracuse coming up in a week or two. Yeah, I mean, boy, that, that, that game March 1st in Charlottesville uh, could, could be just as regular a season matchup, so uh, could be epic if, if Syracuse can somehow uh, remain undefeated and, uh, between now and then after the way they escaped the Pittsburgh the other day. You know, maybe they are on track, or maybe you need a state and you got to put it through their heart to beat that squad. Uh, but no, Tony Bennett's done a great job. He's a defensive-minded coach, but he, he's got more balance and versatility on offense this season than he ever has. Uh, and the keys, in, in my mind, are the freshman point guard, London Parkes, because, number one, he's so steady. And, number two, he has allowed Malcolm Brogdon, who redshirted last season with foot injury, to slide over from the point to his more natural spot at the, at the two. Uh, where he can be more aggressive offensively. And with, with Brogdon and more assertive scoring, that's taken some of the load off Joe Harris, who oftentimes last year was a one-man show. Yeah, it's certainly been a, uh, an improvement this year for Virginia's basketball team. But what kind of seed can Virginia expect as we go into the NCAA tournament in March? Well, it, clearly it, it, it hinges on, uh, on how the Cavaliers uh, finish the, the, the remainder of the regular season and then how they perform it in Greensboro. I think right now, if, if, if the tournament were to be seeded, they would be a four or a five. Uh, but I think certainly they, they have a higher ceiling than that, uh, depending on how they play. Right, and um, looking ahead to this matchup tomorrow, obviously Clemson lost in double overtime on Tuesday night. Uh, K.J. McDaniels played his heart out. Um, some of the guys around him are struggling scoring. Just talk about, um, it's going to be on ESPN, too. What are some of the keys for the, uh, how do you think Clemson can pull the upset tomorrow? Well, clearly they're capable. What They've lost one home game all year, beat two down there. Uh, and you, you mentioned K.J. McDaniels, too. To me, he's one of the most, if not the most, complete player uh, in the league this season. I'm not sure if he cracks that five-man uh, first team all conference spot, but certainly he's going to be uh, second team at worst. He's going to be on the all defensive team. Uh, he's just had a superb junior season. And in, in my mind, guys, um, playing Virginia, while they defend so much differently than Syracuse does in a 2 3 zone, the key to beating it is, is similar. You've got to be able to shoot it over the top. Uh, you're going to have to make some threes uh, to, to beat UVA. And, and to do that often, your, your, 
post guys, you know, Blossom Game and, and Loco, they're going to have to be able to kick it out of double teams very quickly and very effectively. Because when Clemson kicks into the post, they're just going to swarm them. They're going to double, and it's up to those post guys to find the open man on the court. Yeah, and you talk about um, Virginia the other night playing Maryland, and that was sort of a similar game to the one they can see down here. Uh, what did that tell you about how Virginia is going to match up with Clemson, and overall, how did they perform against a team like Maryland? Well, they they didn't play as well in the first half as, as they did in the second. But boy, they, again, they, they defended uh, so well. The leading score, opponents' leading scores, Virginia just has a knack for locking them up. Jabari Parker didn't do much against them. T.J. Warren didn't do much against them. Des Wells had a relatively quiet night against them. So you know they're going to save their defense for the Daniels. And Clemson is going to need to find some secondary score. All right, and once again, we're joined by uh, David Teal, writer for the Daily Press in Hamden Road, Virginia. Let's move to uh, Blacksburg a little bit and talk. Uh, Virginia Tech's on, uh, I believe, a ten straight ACC losing streak, and uh, and you know you see Seth Greenberg all the time on uh, ESPN now. Do you think uh, there's a little bit of a regret for letting him go? I don't think there is. From a from a results standpoint, you can certainly make the argument. But uh, it had gotten to the point there uh, with with Coach Greenberg and Jim Weaver, who was then the athletic director, who recently retired. They were just in loggerhead. And it, it just wasn't working out. And when you and your boss don't get along, often uh, it's best for both parties uh, for separation. And I think you can make the argument that Seth is better off. I mean, he's doing a great job. Uh, on, on, on TV and plays the rave reviews as, as well as he should, and that doesn't surprise anyone uh, who knew him when he, when he coached down here. Uh, but there's but there's no denying that, uh, that the program is struggling, uh, looking at its third consecutive last place finish in the league, uh, which makes for some curious decisions for the new athletic director with Babcock. Right, switching gears to football a little bit. Um, let's let's talk about the two Frank Beamer and Mike London in uh, in the state of Virginia. Do you think that there is going to? I know there's probably going to be a lot of pressure on London. He's recruited pretty well in the, at Virginia. I mean, how, how much pressure do you think will be on him next year? And ultimately, what do you think the timetable for Frank Beamer is and uh, his retirement and, and eventually uh, leaving Blacksburg? Well, Mike London first. I I think the pressure is immeasurable. Um, if the program doesn't produce this year, I think there will be a, a, a coaching change in Charlottesville. Uh, it's just you know, three losing seasons in, in four years, and, and last year was their worst year since 1981. They were winless in the league. They had only one win uh, over a 1A opponent, and that was in the opener against BYU. So it's essentially they peaked the first game of the season and got progressively worse. Uh, so th- there has to be some market progress uh, at UVA next season. As for Frank Beamer, uh, he's coached there 27 years, guys, and he's 67 years old. When he's when he's 70, he will have coached there 30 years. That, to me, seems like so, I mean, the, the round number, you know, go out after 30 years, you're, you're age 70, I don't see Coach Beamer trying to go much longer than that. He is very aware of what happened in the latter stages of uh, Joe Paterno's career. And that's it, you know, not even taken into account, but that's just in terms of wins and losses and perception of the program. And also Bobby Brown in Florida State, I think you can make the argument that both of those giants uh, held on a little too long, and I don't think Frank Beamer will. Ah, certainly, Frank Beamer has had an incredible career up there. I can't remember the stats on how many 10-win seasons he had in a row, but um, he, yeah, it's looking like it might be time for him to maybe step down and retire. It might not be too much longer. But I heard some uh, some mumbling on the idea of a 
nine-game conference schedule in the ACC. So ACC t- teams, instead of playing eight, would play nine games in the conference. What's your opinion on that, and what's the latest news? Does it look like that's going to happen? Yeah, it's more than one guys. It's under very serious consideration. And I think that the, the league will, will come to a decision one way or the other, probably at the spring meetings in May down in Amelia Island, Florida. Um, they've gone back and forth on that. Uh, when Syracuse and Pittsburgh joined the league, the league uh, approved a, a nine-game conference schedule, and even to the point where they uh, came up with a, with a rotation for it. Uh, but then the scheduling arrangement with Notre Dame, uh, and, and adding the Irish to play five uh, ACC opponents each season uh, kind of led some folks, especially at Clemson and Georgia Tech and Florida State, to reconsider. Uh, thought they lost some flexibility with non conference scheduling. So, oops, before we even installed the nine game schedule, we went back to eight. Well, now the push to nine is rooted in two things. Number one, the distinct possibility of in partnership with ESPN and ACC channel. And to fuel that channel, you need more inventory. And inventory means games. And if you have a conference game in football, that helps your inventory and the possibility of a channel. And then there's the point of the new college football playoff. Strength of schedule, much like it is in the NCAA basketball tournament, will be a serious consideration in picking the playoff team. But that, by the way, on the basketball side, is what's going to be a killer for Clemson. Clemson's non-conference schedule is ranked darn near 300th in the country, so the Tigers have some serious work to do to get themselves in the bracket. Uh, but back to football, strength of schedule is going to play a huge role if you get the playoff, and if you replace certain weaker non-conference opponents with a conference opponent, uh, yeah, it should be interesting to see what could happen with a potential nine-game schedule. But, David, yeah, thanks again um, from the Daily Press and at, uh, on Twitter. You can find him. But let's get a quick score prediction for the game tomorrow, and then we'll let you go back to your business. Well, I, I kind of like Clemson's campus tomorrow, guys. Virginia has lost four straight down there. Um, and Clemson's desperate. Just so needs a, a, a win for its for its NCAA tournament resume. That's called 54-51 Tigers. That sounds like a pretty good score to us. It's been two heartbreaks this week, but uh, thanks again, David, and we'll definitely get you back on soon. And uh, as we get, you know, as Virginia keeps going through a- ACC play, so thanks again. We appreciate it. My pleasure, gentlemen. Be well. All right, you too. Thanks. That's David Teal from uh, the Daily Press in Hampton's Road, Virginia. And uh, 